hi guys hi thank you very much for tuning on to my youtube channel today this is your favorite babe your favorite tt your favorite tea time spiller kirsty valentine hi thank you very much my topic today is about bullying if you remember i uploaded and did a video about three four weeks ago the topic was talking about the main topic in that video was bullying anti-bullying i'm going to be doing a three-part series and the first part you will have a part one and part two and in in the part second series you're going to be having a part one and part two so you're going to have six videos in a three part series about anti-bullying the topic today is a part two of the first series which is when fellow women bully another fellow woman in a social gathering and that would be in a public place which can be quite embarrassing frustrating annoying you want to kick the ass out of that woman you want to take a revenge i will give you the tips on how to handle yourself and make yourself victorious and make the bullier look like a damn fool hi guys welcome you're all welcome thank you very much for tuning on to your favorite channel your favorite tt kirsty valentine your tea time spiller thank you very much so the topic begins i want to share my victorious anti-bullying strategy i used um, that became very very successful and i still use that uh, trick today it's very simple it's very easy remember that bullies have got issues they are not happy they might have had issues that have affected them in their childhood somewhere in their childhood and their attitude today towards other people or a fellow woman by trying to demean them in public or run them down in public is as a result of what they have been through in their life and your responsibility is not to become the victim but to become the victor the victoria and the victorious so you're no longer the victim you're moving from the victim to the victorious so i call that the v2 the double v's the v2 now in the past some few years ago uh, i attended a wedding function somebody i know very very well and uh, at the reception a very very big hall very very large reception we had lots of people from all over who came um it was a very very big reception wonderful reception we I sat on the table. I was, you know how these halls are. You have different tables. You have all your chairs. You have the chairs. You come with your family, every group, every person with his own group of friends or family and things like that. Or club, ladies' social clubs or men's social clubs. They all have their own, own seats. It's all arranged and organized. And I was sitting with my guest, two of my guests, myself and my daughter. So we were four of us on, on the table. So as we were talking, you know how it is, everybody's talking, everybody's happy, they are all in their best and everything. This lady whom I know, uh, not necessarily know, I know her, but the, the person I really know is her husband because her husband is like a close family friend. Um, way, 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 way back. So they are like long time uh family friends live in the same area with the, my grandparents his, his dad and my granddad were in the same club so it's like friend family kind of relationship she was married to his son and um she left uh her table where she was sitting with her her family her in-laws and their friends 
and few of my family members you know all those uh, aunties and uncles those grand aunties and uncles maybe your mom's brother or your mom's relative or grand auntie grand uncle that always see nothing good in you that like to run you down and try to use your shortfall as a point of mockery on the spot you know those sort of people and they always say it in your dialect in your language and they say it so loudly so that other people around there could hear you know which is which is very very backward really really backward and stale um but their mindset does not tell them that really uh, she left her she was sitting there in the group of those people she left her side where she was sitting which was a complete opposite position in the hall i was at the far end and she was at the other side there was no connection whatsoever she decided to leave her seat on the table where she was sitting and gossiping with some old fool, old fool relatives of mine. And she came to my table uninvited, uh, uninvited, and she clumsily, rudely sat on one of the seats that was empty because uh, you got five, uh, five seats. And she said to me while I was entertaining my guest, while I, I and my guest we were chatting away. And she said to me, in my dialect, from nowhere, we never had that discussion. We don't even call. We don't speak to each other. We're not friends. I didn't even see her 10 years before that occasion. And she said, is it not time you get married? Is it not time, is it not time you have another child after your daughter? after your child you are still selecting and when she said it people around my table heard everything she said and they turned around and they were looking at me like that you know our people they were looking at me because you know if they were the one they would, they would insult her they would react and things like that but i didn't i took charge the holy spirit took charge of the occasion this is where her defeat began. I looked at her because my guests were looking at me like, <laughs> Kirsty, did you hear that? So I looked at her and I said, I was with a beautiful smile. I was boiling inside. I didn't let it show on my face. I didn't let it show on my, come out in my voice tone, not even in my body language. I was so, I was so, I, because I was dressing so beautiful, yeah, I would not allow her sadness to take over my joy. I looked at her and I said, well, it's a good thing you said that. I said, you know, the first time did not work. The second time, I have to take my time to settle down because I can't do it on my own. God is in charge and God's time is the best and nobody knows God's time. Because if I decide to take charge and if it doesn't work, you will be the same one that will laugh at me and say, the first time did not work. The second time did not work. So you are the one with the problem. You know how our community people don't even bother to find out the truth before judging and spreading rumor. <laughs> so I said to her, what do you want, my dear? Do you want Chinese roll? Do you want meat pie? Do you want sausage roll? Or you want chin chin? You know, she got so pissed off that I was even offering her food. I even put the snack on her. She got pissed off. And she walked away because everybody now looked at her. Nobody was saying anything. Nobody said or was saying anything to her. She ended up looking like a damn fool. Because when she said it in her mind, she thought that when she said it to me, people will be laughing. And when I react, people will be laughing and say, ah, why are you behaving like this against so black? But people just look at her. And like a fool, like, look at you, you fat, big fool. And she hastily, in embarrassment, didn't even eat. Have, she didn't even have the courtesy to accept or eat the snacks I gave to her. She ran back as fast as 
she ran back to her seat where she was sitting with her gossip friends and family members. She ran faster than before when she came to sit with us. So the victim who was myself became victorious. Then the bully, who is the bullier, was defeated and ran hastily away faster than she came back to her seat. Don't allow people, my dear women, don't allow a fellow woman to take charge of your happiness. Because your joy and your peace of mind and your happiness is yours. You work too damn hard to achieve it, to have it inside you. So nobody, no one, no living soul has the right to turn it around into negativity because you are in charge of your joy, your happiness, and your peace of mind. Even without buying cream in the market, you will glow and you shine because you are happy inside you. Guess what? I will tell you what she said. I will tell you in my language, in my dialect. She looked at me like this. Who ye we si si? Ama ye se gen waya bie le lo we. Who ye se le ti? Did you hear that? Ah, you are still doing si si. Is it not time you have a child after your child? You are still selecting at this age. But she ran back to her chair and I was smiling. Because she didn't expect me to offer her food and smile with her and even call God. The reaction she was expecting from me was totally different from what she got. Ladies, that is how to conquer your enemies. You have peace in you. A child who says his mother will not sleep, he too will not sleep. But if God has given you sleep and a good rest and peace of mind and joy, no evil weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Nobody will disturb your sleep but themselves. And I will tell you how the words that came out from the mouth of the bully manifested in her own life. This lady has been in marriage before I even came to this country. She had, she's got three or four kids. After over almost 20 something years of marriage, she and her husband are no more. The husband that was with her in that hall when she opened her mouth to spill out all that rubbish. They are no longer together. So she is now a divorcee. A single parent and her own first child which is her first daughter now ended up a single parent herself so this is why as women we should never listen to rumors and judge people and begin to act against that person because your friend has recruited you to fight the wars that you never knew the beginning in the first place. Don't inherit other people's enemy. It is not your business. Your path in life is different. That you are somebody's best friend for so many years doesn't mean you have to join her in intimidating or putting down or demeaning another fellow woman, especially in public. Because what you say might just manifest in your own life and now you become the subject matter of rumor. People will now be laughing at you. And then the person that you are using their situation, procrastinating and laughing at and making mockery of, their situation 
we now change. Don't forget and always remember, my fellow women, that no position or situation is permanent. Every position and situation is subject to change. And as every situation and position changes, humans change because we are not reliable. You will now notice that your friend who we are supporting to bully another fellow woman will now be the one, the conspicuous one, who is now narrating your own story or your present situation and using it to laugh at you. My people, remember that an aristocrat can become a pauper. And then if the pauper of yesteryears, of yesterday, even this morning and in the afternoon, can become the aristocrat of the evening and forever. No position is yours. So I just want to use this opportunity to urge women, be supportive. If you don't like somebody, stay away. You don't have to procrastinate. You don't have to assassinate another fellow woman's character. You don't have to recruit friends to help you to hate somebody because you don't like them. If you have any battle to fight, go and fight your battle and win your battle. And for those of you who listen to your friend and start acting up with somebody that you don't even have any business with, that doesn't owe you anything, that has done nothing to you, be careful. Be careful. So you don't eat from the curse and inherit any bad luck because it's not your business. And it's not compulsory you must have all these friends anyway because it's only wahala. So join me in my second part series where the topic will be how to handle yourself when you are socially and publicly humiliated or your character is being assassinated by a fellow woman. How you can become the victor, the victoria and the victorious and make the bully and the bullies and the bullier look like a damn old rusty fool. Until our next video, I say love and peace.